We discovered seven planets around another star system, which is 40 light years away from us. These planets are all about the same size as the Earth and the same mass of the Earth. Furthermore, three of the planets are in the right distance from the star that they're in what we call the habitable zone, where it's most likely that they could have liquid water on their surfaces. And of course, if you have liquid water, there's the potential for life. My name is Sean Carey, and I help discover seven Earth-sized worlds around a nearby star. Astronomers are super excited because, you know, this is the thing that we're going to point all our telescopes at in the near future to try to understand it the best we can. So we're just really starting to understand the story of the TRAPPIST-1 system. Right now we know that all the planets are about the same size as the Earth. Some a little bit larger, some are a little bit smaller. The fact that they're rocky, the fact that they're in the habitable zone of the star suggests that they could potentially support life if their atmospheres prove to have the right uh, composition. So that's, that's the big unknown now, is what do their atmospheres look like? These planets would not have a day and night very similar to Earth at all because most of these planets are most likely tidally locked. So what that means is that they present one face of the planet to their sun and the other side is going to be in the perpetual night side. So they're going to look, they'd actually have a very different day night cycle. They're going to have perpetual day on one side, perpetual night mostly on the other. The distances between the planets in this system are very comparable to the distance between our moon and the Earth. In fact, they're just a few moon-Earth separations from each other, so they're relatively close. And what that means is that if you were in the, you know, on one of these planets and looking up at your night sky, you would see other planets from your system, but they wouldn't look like little faint dots like Venus or Jupiter. They would actually look something like the size of our full moon. It would be, be a, quite a stunning view, I would imagine. The question, is, could we live on these planets, is we, we don't know yet. That basically we don't have enough information at this point in time, but we will start to get clues about that as we take future observations. It's named TRAPPIST-1 because it's the first system discovered by the TRAPPIST telescope. The telescopes used were the TRAPPIST telescope, which is a decent sized uh, optical telescope in Chile. And then the Spitzer Space Telescope, which is NASA's infrared grade observatory. The way we made the discovery is first, it, it comes in two parts. The, uh, the ground-based telescopes observed the system for as long as they could, you know, from each night to night. And basically what they looked for was dimming of the star uh, due to planets going around it. When we first realized what we found, it initially it was, it was kind of confusing because what we saw was there were a lot of transits, uh, more than we expected. It was pretty monumental though just to look at the initial data even before we did any real processing or hard thought and said, wow, you know, there's a lot of stuff in here. So you could tell right away it was an exciting, you know, set of data to work on and there was a huge discovery space. It got even more exciting. The more we looked at it, the more exciting it got. So the next step is to point telescopes at them and learn more about the systems. Instead of just simple cameras, we're gonna use very powerful spectrographs, which will allow us to look for the chemical fingerprints of atmospheres around these planets. And then that'll potentially lead to being able to look for biosignatures. Whether or not there's life on the planets is a very open question. And you know we can only speculate at this point because we really have no evidence one way or the other. Uh, certainly there's nothing that we've learned so far that would preclude the existence of life, but it's a really hard thing to tell. One of the great things is that you know if we're not gonna have to wait too much longer before we'll have more information and potentially information that shows the presence or lack of life on these worlds.